Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to here, this wonderful place of Worcester Park in Surrey, England, very close to London. And I'm delighted that uh, we're going to have our first uh, show here today. And so let's get the show on the road. And I'm delighted to welcome here today none other than Beth Steele, all the way from Breckenridge in Colorado. Welcome, Beth. Good morning, Graham. Hi, good morning. Oh, it is morning, of course, in Colorado. We're ready good. for our we're ready for our afternoon tea. Never Indeed. mind your coffee. How is everything going in Colorado? Oh, it's great. It's great. How are you? Ah, well, as as well as can be expected. Um, I don't think I'm going anywhere very far at the moment, except popping over to see you in Colorado uh, through the wonderful means of uh, StreamYard, which is uh, pretty good things to do anyway. Uh, but we're, we're coping very, very well. Thank you very much. Now, Beth, I'd like to have a little chat with you, if I may. And one of the things I'm, I'm interested in, because hopefully there's some, going to be some people listening, and they're very keen to know something about Beth Steele, the person. I, I know you've had a wonderful, wonderful career uh, in the U.S. Army Band. So tell us just, just a little bit about that. Well, gee, I, you know, when I met you, uh, I was the commander of the U.S. Army Europe Band and Chorus stationed in Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, that was I was there for four years, and that was my second to last assignment. So I came back from there back to Colorado Springs, actually to Fort Carson, uh, and retired in 2013 after 25 years um, wow. in the Army Band program. So... But, but let me let me roll you back just a little bit further in time, if I could, because what's interesting me is I never really got the answer from you before. But when you when you were at college, playing in the college bands and everything else and doing your degree, you obviously made a decision that you wanted to be a conductor in the United States Army. How does that process work? Well, it's it's a very selective process. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are only 21 commissioned officers in the Army Band Program, or were at the time. Uh, there are more warrant officers, so those are folks that have come through the enlisted ranks and then auditioned. Um, but commissioned officers usually have degrees in conducting, and they come in as officers. So you go through officer training or that kind of thing, and then you're selected in the band program. So uh, that's what I did. I was in Reserve Officer Training Corps in uh, – Chicago at Northwestern University and then yeah. uh, so I was commissioned and then auditioned for the band program so wow incredible and of course we we got together um you know through our meeting each other and going to Heidelberg and thank you very much for the kind invitation there and then I brought you over to London Indeed. and and you got involved in quite a few interesting things and I remember that I think it was 2011 maybe before then that uh, you came over with your band, and we took you to see um, we took you to see uh, Trooping the Color, the Queen's Birthday Parade. It looks something like this, I think. Yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah, and uh, and I remember that. Uh, I think some of your musicians were quite amazed at how long our band stood there for. Oh yeah, they yeah, they were very thankful on the next ceremony that we did that they weren't standing for two and a half hours. So. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that. But that's created uh, – we'll come back to that picture in a little bit longer. Um, but how about at the moment, how's life uh, going on in Breckenridge? Because I, I got this picture I thought I'd show you because you know it very well, but uh, I don't think people may not realise exactly where you are, which is Breckenridge, which is the wonderful ski resort, and it must be quite strange at the moment uh, and yep. really quite deserted. It is very deserted. We shut down on March 14th. Um, and uh, it's, you know, that would be the kind of the peak, starting the peak of our spring break season for skiing. And uh, streets are, the, the slopes are completely empty. You know, no, no chairlifts are running. The gondola is not running. Nothing. It's just, you know, we just literally turned off the switch. But I'm sure then that the, the whole town must have ground to a halt. It must be crippling the finances and the economy of Breckenridge itself. Yeah, unfortunately it is really, I mean, our, you know, Breckenridge is really a tourist um, 
economy. Mm. And so our economy clearly has been decimated more so than more so than other communities, I think. But but tourism in Colorado is, is major. And so I think the state is going to be suffering for quite a while. I can imagine. I can imagine that, too. So I believe you've been doing quite a bit of work um, with uh, the ACB, the, the Association of Concert Bands, isn't it? Indeed. Yeah. So I'm in my second term uh, on the board of directors for Association of Concert Bands. And that really is just it's a great organization that that links like minded adults and, and students um, with concert bands, community bands throughout the country. And it is international. I think you're on our, our advisory board, you know, and that's been great, great experience. You know, unfortunately, I'm sure like your bands, we're kind of all shut down at the moment trying to figure out how we're gonna, how we're gonna proceed in the future. Yeah, I can imagine that's uh, gonna be quite difficult, but there's some interesting forums that have been going on within the Association of Concert Bands, uh, one particularly on Corrid uh, 19 and bands a uh, special band discussion forum that's Absolutely. been going on. Yeah, so well, I'd be interesting to find out some some information about that. Yeah, there are lots. You know, everybody's kind of in the same boat. We're trying. You know, it's 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 devastating to go from uh, you know playing concerts and rehearsals every week to not playing any music. You know, together. You know, I'm sure individuals all over the world are playing playing their instruments and playing. But it's a different experience playing, you know, in an isolated, isolated room or something. You're yeah. not with your friends, not with your community. So I've seen quite a lot of bands have actually been doing this virtual um, practice, virtual concerts. I've been going right. on. The Royal Marines over in here in the UK did a really spectacular version. And there was one in Ireland and it's uh, called Ireland's Call. And it had something like 300 musicians. All performing but I was looking on this uh, on the ACB website and uh, I think I came across something that you may need to look at it is quite good there we look at that Wednesday May that's the 27th I was just gonna say, that's yeah yeah so well, it's the United States Marine Band uh, it has partnered with American Bandmasters Association and yeah, they're okay. inviting, inviting folks to play um, can this be a global thing or is it just going to be a US thing I think it can be a global thing. It sounds like it's a good idea. Maybe we've got a couple of Brits who are listening in at the moment and they may fancy that. Now, do explain to me, because you know, I'm just a little Englishman here, that 1 p.m. EDT. Eastern Daylight Time. So that's on the East Coast of the United States. Right. So, so, we're, so on, we're, in, we're in, you know, there are four time zones in the U.S. Eastern is on the East Coast, right, and then Central central us mountain time that's where i am right, right. So, so it's a little after 10 a.m thank you very much here oh Graham. well done <laughs> thanks and for getting up in the pacific time right which is west coast us so okay you so, are you are you are seven hours ahead of us seven hours yeah but what is um i i think i published this as 5 p.m uh eastern standard time is that different to daylight time or is there no such thing did I make it up? <laughs> no, we have daylight savings time, you know, here, okay. uh, which, you know, the clocks go forward an hour in the spring and fall back an hour in the fall. Okay. So I was, I was just thinking about, let's just go back to that, that wonderful picture, because I like it, of, uh, of, the, of the masked guards bands. And you can see how close they all are, just literally <laughs> an arm's length sure. next to each other. Now, how are they, how are they going how, to, how are we going to do this now in this in this crazy world when we in the UK at the moment we've got social distancing and I'm sure you have as well and our social distancing is uh, two meters apart about six feet something like that and obviously you can't really perform like that however I have to say that uh, the past weekend was victory in Europe the 75th anniversary of that and of course a lot of celebrations were going on here and there were uh, celebration social distancing parties which were quite interesting uh, in itself to see that and what happened with that is that there was a broadcast through the royal british legion on bbc and they had a guards band uh performing live on television and they were all social distancing as a marching band yeah well and i think it actually worked <laughs> yeah i think that's i think that's 
the the thing that will work actually that's the easiest to to overcome right out outdoor marching style bands right because yeah. you have enough space to, to spread out two meters no of course but then obviously different inside as we know this contagion uh is more rampant indoors than it is outside uh so when you take it into the concert band and you go inside then for we've got quite a few problems because the band we need to be close together so we can hear each other perform together as a musical ensemble so are there any studies ongoing at the moment to see how dangerous that is you know when you're playing a musical instrument particularly a wind instrument is that a is there a lot of danger with that or is it okay well, I think uh, it's, it's on the Association of Concert Bands discussion forum, too. There right, been, okay. There's been a study, preliminary study out of Germany that discusses the aerosolization of the, of our, the virus, right? Through, you know, how, how, how much does it travel? Basically, when you're playing an, a brass instrument, people always are concerned that brass are loud and they're blowing a lot of air through the horn. And so that what they discovered initially anyway, was that the, the instrument actually blocks quite a bit of that. Um, of course, it's preliminary. They didn't study flutes because they couldn't figure out how to separate enough, right? The flute, there's no, yeah, you can't point the flute anywhere but to your neighbor. So, um, and so they suggested flutes should be vertical and there, there's some, you know, <laughs> okay. vertical flute, but that's quite an interesting concept really. So, you no, know, I think, I think the, uh, the spit pad, you know, you know, obviously we have condensation that brass players blow out their horn. So, yeah, I think somebody's soon, right? There's the whole world is working on this. We'll come up with a, a you know, spit pad that, that kills the virus on contact. You know, and as an individual player, I would pick that up and throw it away kind of thing. That would help. But I think it's going to be a long time before we can, you know, concert bands resume as we know it. You know, I think we'll have to look for ways uh, to to go forward using small ensembles and you know that kind of thing, just be creative. Yeah, I think that's uh, yeah, that's an important thing that we have to be creative to make it work. Because the other part of this, we obviously we have to look at the the well being of performers, and they have to have the confidence to be able to sit on a concert platform and perform safely. But then we have to consider the audience. Now, oh, yeah. here, obviously, here we are in London, and we've got we're, we're a bit like New York in the fact that we have all these uh, this wonderful theatre land, and obviously, theatre land is closed. All the concert halls are closed, and there is a feeling that the audience, the London audience, is a bit nervous about returning to theatres and returning to concert halls, and somehow we've got to get over there and over that and i see that uh andrew lloyd weber has uh, been involved recently and uh he's actually said that you cannot uh impose social distancing in theaters it just won't work because you and i know the whole economics of that is if you fill one in four seats uh then you've got two seats that aren't being paid for right yeah, and, and the margins are so tight. So just economically, I think it's going to be very difficult. But I think it's going to be very, very difficult to persuade the concert goer and the audiences to go back into the theatres, particularly when the majority of the audiences tend to be slightly older. Right. Well, you know, the, there are few there are few examples that have been successful of orchestras theater companies online, Metropolitan Opera, New York, and Berlin Philharmonic. They've been, they've been doing web, you know, live casts for, for years. Um, so I think as this pandemic evolves, you know, I think more and more people are searching online because it's, they feel safer, right? They can do it from their living room. Um, I think that's going to be a real challenge to attract. I mean, we already have, we already have challenges to attract audiences yeah. to live music anyway. You know, there's so many options that, you know, people, I think, you know, we've got to be doing something really pretty extraordinary. Yeah, I, th so. I think you're quite right there. Yeah. I just wanted to do pop up a, a picture just to let everybody see this. Remember when you came to London and you performed in what was the 
British military tournament. Right. I think. Yeah. I remember you doing Earl, that. Earl's Court, right? At Earl's, at Earl's Court. Yeah. Lots and lots of performances, I remember, and a huge band. And uh, it was great fun to be involved with. But uh, I managed to drag up this little picture, Beth, and I'm sure it'll bring back a few fond memories. Oh, yeah. There we go with Her Majesty the Queen looking very resplendent. I think that's an excellent picture of you with uh, with Her Majesty the Queen. I just thought I'd share that with everybody. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And the yeah, other one I wanted to do. That's certainly a highlight of my career. Yeah. You know, yeah. Meeting Her Majesty. We have many British guests that come ski here in Breckenridge. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband, Mike, also likes to show that picture because he, as he talks about, you know, Her Majesty and you know, yeah. he just popped the picture up on his phone and they're, you know, they've lived, lived in the UK all their life and they've never met Her Majesty. So I felt very honored to have met her. She's quite extraordinary. Yeah, she is indeed. And uh, she's been particularly uh, outstanding uh, during this current situation. She's, she's given some incredible uh, couple of speeches um, from uh, Windsor Castle, where she's self-isolating with uh, with the Duke of Edinburgh, right. and I, I remember that uh, for the beating retreat, um, the salute taker was the Duke of Edinburgh. I think he, I remember that. Uh, yes, I remember that too, very well. Yeah, but this is another little surreal picture for you. Now is surreal. There we go. Remember that Buckingham Palace, and and of course throughout the whole of the the war years. Normality was the key in the in the capital city here in London, and it was considered that we should keep the bands playing, and the ceremony of changing the guard should continue. But of course, sadly, that's now not the case. Yeah. yeah so, so, what do you think, Graham? What do you think the future of state ceremonial music will be? You know, in the short term. Well, in yeah. the short in the short term, I I would think uh, both both nations are the same. Uh, music can't really take place as we as we know it. So the the musicians uh, of the British Army uh, are all at home. They're practicing from home, and they're called out occasionally if there's uh, wreath layings to be done, and you need uh, trumpeters and that self isolating band that we had for the VE day. Um, I'm not quite sure how they're going to go beyond that. They're going to have to wait until it gets safer uh, to uh, to get people together. I mean, I think the same for you. The football stadiums, our soccer stadiums are all deserted. And yeah. it's looking now that we're not going to get uh, supporters into soccer stadiums uh, until at least January. So that should show us how how difficult this is gonna to be to gradually safely come out of this situation and come out to the other side where we can get some form of normality back. I don't know whether that's gonna be the same in the in the US. Yeah, I suspect I suspect so as well, where all our sports sporting events are shut down. I mean, golf is gonna start again. No no spectators. Yeah. Our baseball is gonna start again, but no spectators, and that's this summer, you know. So yeah. There, you know, of course, football, American football, you know, that drives drives a lot of our economy, you know, especially for college, college football and professional football in the fall. So I think, you know, universities are trying hard and the professional football league is trying hard to figure out how they're going to do that. Yeah, they're just starting uh, training here for the soccer leagues. Uh, they're just starting and it looks like mid-June. Uh, maybe yeah. the first games, but again, behind closed doors, it's unlikely there's going to be rugby, which is the closest we can right. get to your, your football, right. Right. Um, you know, because that's too much of a contact. Um, so that, <laughs> I think that's that would just... Messier, even. That's a little messier than our football. Even. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. But uh, like you, uh, golf, um, the golf courses are now full uh, this week. That's just uh, happened. Um, of course, being very British, uh, fishing is back on the agenda, so everybody can go and do a bit of fishing in the lakes and rivers uh, of our wonderful country. And tennis is now uh, allowed. So it's a start, um, but I think it's still um, deep waters to go through before we come out the other side. How about cricket? Cricket, the cricket season isn't on yet, but I think when cricket season starts, it will be allowed, but again, behind closed doors. I would think so. 
Uh, anyway, Beth, it's been great to talk with you. Thank you very much for traveling over to my virtual studio here in London. Thank and, you for having uh, me. And I, hopefully uh, you and Mike stay safe and uh, have lots of fun with your wonderful dog, Gunner. Yeah. And I hope those ski resorts open soon. Yeah, take we care might now, get Beth. Take care. Bye-bye. No, okay, we might get a little skiing in. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear that. We might get a little skiing in at the end of this month. They oh. might allow us to open a resort. So there you go. <laughs> well, that, would, that would be brilliant news, wouldn't it? I think that would be a breath of fresh air for everybody in, uh, in Breckenridge and the surrounding area. Again, yeah. thanks, Beth, very much. It's been lovely to talk with you. Thanks, and hopefully friend. see you again soon. Take care now.